Well, what uh, what's cool for IT pros with uh, the new mobility features? Sure. So besides all the cool stuff we did for end users, IT pros, we got to put some goodness in there for them because they're the people who are administrating all of this. And these are people who are listening to us, right? Right. So you think about what's happened with Exchange Active Sync. We used to have a couple licensees, and then we kept growing and growing, and now we have over 20 licensees of Exchange Active Sync. So there's lots of devices out there that are connecting. That means if you're administering an Exchange server, you've got to be concerned about all these different things that connect, what security policies they have, how protected they are. And so we're adding an allow block and quarantine list. And so you'll be able to go in in the server, and you'll be able to go all the way from, say, the most permissive, where you're going to say, I'm going to allow anything to connect to my enterprise. But if I found out there was a security hole with one of the particular devices, I could say, OK, I want to block any of those devices from my particular organization until that's been patched. All the way to people who want to be kind of the most secure and say, I only want to tie this device to that user. And we give you the control to do everything there, as well as anything in between. You can set exceptions. Say if you're in IT and you're testing out a new device. Say you've got an approved list of devices. There's five devices that you guys support at Help Desk. So you're only going to allow those to uh, connect. But someone's got a new device, and you want to see, OK, are we going to approve this? Are we going to bring a new device in, let another one go out? And so you can say, OK, I'm going to approve just that device or just that device for just these users. And when a new one comes in, you can say, quarantine devices I don't know, and then send me an email and tell me, hey, this device is kind of waiting. Or you can choose to take action on that. You can pro proactively say, hey, I know this is coming. I'm going to set it up. So we're going to give IT pros the ability to do all of that. Plus, because you're doing all that, you can have the, the ability to run a report and basically see what devices are connecting. And you can kind of set that report up. OK, show me the Windows Mobile 6.1 devices that are connecting. Show me the 6.5 devices that are connecting. You can actually kind of sort those out and so you can see what's going on. And you can get that by user as well? Yep. Uh, okay. You can always get it by user. And since we allow okay. multiple users to connect, or one user to connect multiple devices, you can see all the devices connected to a particular user if you wanted. OK, that's cool. What was the decision point as far as why to put that into Exchange versus Mobile Device Manager? How did that all play down? <laughs> So Exchange is really the first place that people look when they think about mobilizing the enterprise. So when, when people think about mobilizing critical data with their organization, email's number one. And so that's where it starts, because people will start with Exchange. And when you think about System Center's mobile device manager, it's great for people who are very high security focused. And for people who have that high level of security, you know, banks, pharmaceutical companies, governments, if they have that, then that product provides an additional set of beneficial features. But we wanted to put it in Exchange because there's so many people that use Exchange, and there's so many different licensees that are out there that are having these devices connect in, that this was the call I always got. Every conference I go to, every time someone was dealing with a customer and had an escalation, the question I always got was, hey, you know, how can we, how can we choose to block devices? How can we control what's coming in, and how do I know what's going on? And that's actually, we, I wrote a blog post um, half a year ago or so up on the blog, the Exchange blog, about that because people asked so many times. So we figured rather than showing people ways that you can kind of configure it and ways that you can work around it through user agent strings, we were just going to build the feature directly in because that's where IT pros wanted it. Um, so the other, the other thing I'm wondering about is as far as updates. So updates to the platform, how, how are we handling that? Yeah. So. Big question we've always gotten is you sometimes had this challenge of, well, I can update my Exchange server, but then I need to update all my devices to get all the benefits. Or if I update my devices, then I have to wait till I update my Exchange servers. You had this kind of chicken and egg of how people can get the benefits that we've provided as part of the mobile story that's really evolved in Exchange ever since Exchange Server 2003 when we first in introduced mobility. And so everything that I showed you today, as well as a bunch of other features that we built in that we haven't had a chance to talk about, is available in 6.5. But what we're also doing is we're making it updatable for the Windows Mobile 6.1 devices. So if you have Windows Mobile 6.1 devices, you take that device and you connect it to an Exchange server with 2010, it's going to say, hey, there's an update available. You know, Please install this. And by installing that, you can then have the ability to go in and do all the things I showed you, the conversation view, the actions, the free busy, the UM card, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. So your existing kind of investment that you've done buying Windows Mobile 6.1 devices becomes more valuable to you now because as you update with Exchange Server 2010, all those devices are updatable as well. And of okay. course, for people that have any kind of concerns around that, we've also added policy controls around that to make sure that as an IT pro, you can choose, do those updates get pushed down, or be, do people not take those updates? OK. Well, that's cool. So, 
What, uh, so if you had a piece of advice to uh, an IT pro, what would you say uh, for them to go ahead and, and do? Oh, I mean, the, <laughs> what would they go do? Download the beta. The yeah. beta's up there. It's public right now. Download this and really, especially if you love mobility stuff like I do, take this stuff and start playing around with it because there are some really cool features that are out there that you can kind of tinker with and see the extra benefits that you can get when you upgrade to Exchange Server 2010. And so the more you play with this, I think the more you're really going to love it. And so my, I would say, go start playing with it. You know, down, download the image, download a VPC, set that up, and really see all how easy it is to get really powerful features for both you and control as an IT pro, as well as your users for productivity. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Take care.